From time to time, your sanitary valve requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the SPX Flow APV Delta DKR Double Seat Ball Valve. Servicing the DKR valve will require the tools displayed here. It is important to note the use of APV food grade grease in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the valve and its internal components. Use of other brands or types of grease may cause damage to internal components resulting in a malfunctioning valve. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply grease throughout the maintenance process. Caution must be used at all times when supplying air to the valve throughout the maintenance process. Never reach into or place fingers in the way of potentially moving components to avoid risk of injury. As seen in the cutaway, the DKR serves as a shutoff valve in mix-proof applications. The valve contains two seat seals separated by an atmospheric brake. In the event that a seat seal requires service, the valve will leak from the drain at the bottom of the valve to provide a visual indication. This should not be confused with the normal leakage that occurs during transition of the valve. The leakage chamber and internal cavities of the housing are cleaned by supply of cleaning liquids or steam via the flush connection. This allows the valve to be cleanable in place according to e-hedge testing. The DKR, shown with sanitary clamps in this video, can be provided with many different connection types depending on installation requirements. It should be noted that welding the cover flanges directly into the process line is typically the most common and most sanitary connection method. Proper maintenance of this valve requires the removal of the connection cover flanges from the valve, regardless of the connection type. Prior to removing the valve from the process line, shut off connecting pipelines and discharge any pressure in the lines. Then, disconnect the pneumatic and electrical connections and remove the CIP flush line. Finally, remove any valve position indicator or control unit if necessary. To remove the valve, use a 13 mm box end wrench to loosen and remove the bolts from the connection flanges. Support should be provided so that the valve does not fall and become damaged as the bolts are removed. Lift the valve from the process line and transport to a workstation to complete the remaining maintenance procedures. Using a 13 mm box wrench, remove the two bolts located in the yoke area and separate the valve housing from the coupling and actuator. Pull the shaft bearing from the housing. Again, using your 13 mm box end wrench, repeat the process with the lower shaft bearing. To help pull out the ball seals, half open the ball by hand and grasp behind the seal. Gently remove the housing and ball seals from each side of the valve housing. With a pick, carefully remove the O-rings and guide rings from both shaft bearings. With the shaft bearings and seals removed, ensure the housing with the ball is not subject to vibrations. Continue this process by removing the O-rings located in the CIP flush connection. Next, gather and arrange the required seal kit components for installation, which include new O-rings and guide rings. Install the O-rings and guides into their corresponding grooves. Be sure to first pre-shape the guides to allow for easier installation. Lubricant is not necessary on these components. Repeat this process on both shaft bearings as well as the CIP flush connection. With installation of the O-rings and guides complete, slide both the upper and lower bearing holders over the shaft and into position on the housing. Secure them in place with 13 mm bolts and hand tighten. Replace the housing and ball seals after applying a small amount of lubricant that is included in the seal kit. 
ensure the proper orientation of the seals during installation, with the markings facing away from the product zone. Next, carefully turn the valve ball into the open position by hand. Apply a thin layer of lubricant to the ball seal assembly just prior to installation. Firmly but gently install the seal flange so that it is level with the housing surface. Repeat this process on both seal flanges. Secure the housing into a vise, confirming first that it is fitted with aluminum or brass over the jaws to ensure no damage will occur to the surface finish of the valve. Using a 13 mm box wrench, remove the yoke from the actuator. Orient the yoke into the proper position for mounting, followed by the CIP connection. Position the indicator and coupling prior to installing the retaining bolts. Bolts should only be tightened by hand at this time. Install the bolts with a spare set of connection cover flanges to help with seal retention during installation of the actuator. Next, ensure the actuator is in the open position by supplying it with compressed air. Place the actuator so that the stem is inserted into the coupling correctly and that the bolt holes align between the actuator and the yoke. Install bolts in the bottom of the actuator, finger tight. With a 13 mm wrench, begin by tightening the lower bearing guide bolts, followed by the upper bearing guide bolts. Slightly turn the actuator counterclockwise to adjust the play in the connecting parts. Assure proper positioning prior to final tightening the actuator bolts. Cycle the valve a few times to ensure alignment of the ball port to the open and closed position by means of visual examination. Once the valve and actuator have been assembled correctly, disconnect the air source and remove the spare connection cover flanges. Return to the installation location and gently position and support the valve between the connection cover flanges. Line up the holes and install the bolts using a 13 mm wrench to tighten equally in a cross pattern. Reconnect the pneumatic hose to the actuator or control unit and resupply electrical power if necessary. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your SPX Flow APV DKR valves to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order replacement seal kits or tools, contact your authorized SPX Flow or APV sales representative or visit www.apv.com for more information.